Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Hello, Tarun. It's always good to see you. I hope things in India are going fine. Hello, Anna Marie. Welcome. I'm doing good here in Seattle. Um, I'm looking out the window and it's raining. We have lots of rain in Seattle, so it keeps us green. Um, so where it's better, better for me anyway, that I see rain and not snow. Snow is difficult when you live in the hills. Hello, Rose. Welcome. Hello, Letiza. Ciao. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Misha. Hello, Giovanni. Ciao. Hello, Sandra. Alisa, how are you? Sorry, I'm sorry I missed all of you yesterday. Um, so I thought today because I missed yesterday, and I, I really want to keep both groups um, on the on the same page, so we, we uh, progress together. Um, today I'm just going to answer um, your questions and go over some general things. I think we'll have a little bit of fun today. Um, hello, Eva from Calgary. Beautiful, beautiful uh, province to the north. Canada. Oh, in Trondheim, that's on my, that's on definitely on my list. Yes, Misha, rain is nice. And Bhavana from India. Okay, so we've gone over some major, um, the major pieces of watercolor. For example, we know that light fastness and permanence are the same. Um, we know what staining is, uh, opacity, whether something's transparent or opaque. We know granulation and what the term granulation means versus non-granulation. And uh, staining versus non-staining. So I thought today what I would um, do is we'll, we'll look at some colors, just look at some colors. Um, I'm going to open up some tubes, just random tubes. I just grabbed a handful out of my retains behind me. And I think we'll, we'll play a little bit with, with them. And uh, I'll ask you the characteristics, and then we'll look at the color chart together, and we'll look at what that means. Remember when I say uh, PB29, it means P is always pigment, so it means pigment blue, number 29. Uh, PBK means pigment black, whatever that is. PBR, pigment brown. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So it's very, we're going to try to tie that color chart where it's more of a, um, a really easy to use tool and easy to understand. Um, so one question I get asked quite a bit is about um, paper. And will any paper do? Um, and, and watercolor paper is different because it has what is called sizing. And the sizing allows the, the, the paper not to be um, completely to absorb through. Let me show you an example. So here, I want to point this down. Here you can see some colors that I, I painted out. Okay. And there's they're, they're a little bit of them sitting on top of the sizing, and a little bit has gone into the paper. But if I flip it over, you can see it hasn't gone through. And the reason of that is the sizing. From time to time, you'll find um, sizing um, that's not perfect. And you can see that, you can see if it's not perfect or not, if you, if you wet your paper um, and you can see through it and you can't hear, uh, then the sizing has a failure. But usually companies are pretty good about that. Um, some companies uh, are a little better than the others. Um, Lana Acaro is, is actually quite good at it, um, but that's sizing. So another thing I get asked quite a bit, and again, these are my travel colors here.
in the perfect world you'd be doing this and I should be doing this on a piece of plastic or a piece of porcelain for example but right now my, my paintbrush is full of water it's it's fully loaded it's fully loaded so if I pick up paint with a fully loaded brush and I go to lay it down I'm laying down lots of water so one question I'm asked a lot is well how come how come I am um, sometimes my paint doesn't look the same off the brush and it depends on how much water you're leaving you can actually and I'm gonna do this gonna be hard for you to see um, I'm gonna load my brush with water I just loaded it now I'm gonna shake it I'm gonna go on the floor behind me I'm gonna color my rug there we go I unloaded my brush see I unloaded it and now when I pick up you can see I could pick up way more of that paint so that's how come sometimes you can see and it's just I'm not an artist but it's what um, Laura McCracken showed me and his video shows is you can determine how much you pick up of the paint and how much you unload by how much water you're keeping in your brush hello Daniela from Chile hello Angela um, Joyce I don't know about um, why you're not able to share but what I will do after this I always make these videos shareable um, and if I haven't done that by pressing a button um, it's never asked me before but it's never asked me to give titles to the um, to the discussions uh, until about two weeks ago so I think Facebook is making some changes as they go along and another thing is the colors are always rewettable so this is a perfect example of showing you how they're rewettable these have been dried probably for I mean these are rock solid they're several months and you can easily rewet them now if you misted them give it a quick little mist and waited a couple of seconds 15 20 seconds it'd be a lot easier than what I just did there but you can see even if that were in a tube which I'm going to show you I'm going to dry out one of the tubes and show you it doesn't matter that because we use the gum Arabic and because of our formulation they're rewettable they're rewettable for years if they ever happen to dry out so all you have is a is a big big um, like a big dot so very rewettable you don't have to throw your paints out if they, your paints dry you don't have to throw them out um, they're easy to travel with but you can you can wet them out depending if they have mica in them etc um, they're going to dry out differently so you have to give them a couple seconds to, to re-wet because every pigment is different but they'll all re-wet some a lot easier than others quinacridones um, I don't know what colors I put down here but it was a long long time ago the quinacridones obviously are a lot easier to re-wet just because of how the pigments are so very very easy to re-wet a quinacridone but they're all rewettable. It doesn't matter how long you can rewet them. And we'll try that with some tubes as well. So Anna Marie says something about crawling. Anna, I've not heard of that. Um, I will look that up. Um, so the pigment value number seven is there a way we can exaggerate this character let me play with that and I will get back to you on that so I will look that up during um, our little hiatus oh see Anna says I was in a class recently where a lady opened her watercolor palette from the 1970s and rewetted them that's yeah that's if it's made with the gum Arabic it's it's they're at least ours I can speak for ours um, they're rewettable okay so sometimes I get a, 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 a question um, or asked about um, what is a are these made are your paints made with dyes and, and we use no dyes 
And so what is a die? Um, essentially, a die is, by definition, um, it can be dissolved within its own matrix. What I mean by that is if I put dye into this water and mixed it around and we came back a month later, we would know we would see no precipitate on the bottom. We would see no um, what's a better word what's a different word for that stuff. We would see no stuff. Um, we call it precipitate, but stuff. And if I put the, for example, the um, lapis, And I mixed it around. Now this is just, I just put pigment, pigment only. It looks like it's just, there's nothing there. But I will tell you in um, a day, an hour, several hours, a day, a week, depending on the pigment, we will start seeing stuff fall out of solution and it'll precipitate on the bottom of the cup. And that's really the difference between a dye and a pigment. Um, dyes also, um, there's, there's, there's no dye that I know of uh, which is permanent. Um, words like permanent are used for clothing, etc. It's permanent, non-fading, etc. Well, clothes last us maybe 20 years. And when you're doing a painting, you're looking at something that can last several hundred years. So it's different terminology. When we're, when, we're, when we're talking about, oh, thank you, Eva, sediment. Um, when we're talking about uh, paint, um, we're, we, we're talking about something that we want to last a long, long time. And so Daniel Smith uses no dyes whatsoever. And that's the difference between a pigment and a dye. Also, oh, Debbie's having some bad weather too. Yeah, the thing is, this year has gone by so quickly. Kind of scary um, how quickly it's gone. Um, I'm over 60 now, so when I was, remember when I was a little kid, and the summers would last forever, and now they don't quite last forever. Um, so now let's look at some colors. And by the way, please leave me messages as to questions you have, because I, I want to really make this more something that is... Um, tailored for you and that has meaning for you so I, and I love questions so there's something that I'm not showing you let me know so here's just some some colors yeah Christy the only way that it's going to is Chris says I'm having some trouble with the pigment drawing in the tubes it means it's having air exposed to it because without air it it won't um, it won't dry it needs the watercolors watercolors dry by evaporation so what happens the reason we get the the beautiful colors when it's done is all this water goes away and when it goes away it leaves the the um, the pigment to the strength and the shape that you've left it so if it's drying in the tube there's not a, a good sale happening. But remember, even though it's dry, don't get rid of it because it's absolutely usable. Teresa says, can I ask what shade of yellow that is? Teresa, I believe this is, this is my, this, this for sure is my queen gold. Can you see that? Queen Quin Gold. So yeah, Quin Gold is. Well, hello Barbara, welcome. Glad to have you here. So that Quin Gold is that super beautiful, probably the most, if not the most, number number two. It always goes between uh, Quin Burnt Orange and Quin Gold. Oh, okay. So Anna says you can see. So this this effect right here, Anna. This effect right here, the crawling. 
and we'll go over this more um, January 7th. them together back in Gen on January 7th. I'll go over it more. But in essence, this is caused by surface tension. And if one color has a stronger surface tension, it will push away the other color. If you don't manipulate it and, you know, and force it. We can always force it with our brush. But if you don't, and you're having it do this natural thing, then what happens is the one with the stronger surface tension will push away the one that doesn't. If they have equal surface tension or about equal, they'll kind of be with each other, right? And the weaker, the weaker will, the weaker will go toward the, let's see, the stronger always pushes away the weaker. It's a better way of always saying it. The stronger will push away the, the weaker. And that's why you're getting this, okay? It's surface tension. Very similar to what you see on the side of a cup of water when it's cold. You'll see little tiny beads, and that's because watercolor has a, a high surface tension. And we'll go over more of that. Those are great questions. Good insights. Um, yeah, so crawling, that's what she calls crawling. Interesting. I, I will add that to my vocabulary. Yeah, the quin is just, it's just, it, it is, is, so we're going to go over what is warmer and what is cooler. I'm going to show you how to do that, at least mathematically. Very easy. When I say mathematically, I mean, you could do it in your head. And it's neat because, because you understand color so well as an artist, it, it makes it very, very easy to understand, for general purposes, what's warmer and what's cooler. And what's warmer and what's cooler is always in relation to one color versus another color, right? Um... Okay, let me see. So Melissa, these are just colors I was um, I had put down um, probably four or five months ago just to show. Try not to get these all messed up. Just to show with good sizing. The color won't go through the other side. So I just was trying to explain what sizing was. And sizing is um, a, a uh, can be vegetable, it can be animal. It's, it's something that the manufacturer of the, the watercolor paper puts on, puts on the paper to make it semi-permeable. Um, so Anna, the Quinn Gold is still in stock. However, now it is a blend. It's still quin the blend is still quinacridones, but it's a blend. Um, the original quinacridone single pigment we ran out um, 15 years ago was the I bought all of the stock in the world, and I had it till about two two years ago. The same thing I shared with the group last last time, which was the quinburnt orange. I just bought um, roughly 15 years worth. Um, it's not being made anymore. The manufacturer has ceased. Um, we have very good relationships with our pigment manufacturers, and so we're always in discussion with them. And they told us that, so we made sure that we ordered a 15-year supply, at least 15 years. So we will have the Quinburn Orange as a single pigment for, for quite some time. But I will tell you, I've been, I've been at Daniel Smith for 32 years, and 15 years goes by. Uh, tide just keeps on marching forward. So we're a pigment house. We, we, we're always buying um, and increasing our storage of pigment to make sure that we have continuity of color. Um, but one of, one of the big pigment houses, um, like Siba Gagi or BASF, decide they're not going to make it. They just don't make it. So Via, you might want to try one of the um, dots of the current Quinn Gold or a tube of the, a five mil tube or a 15 mil or a half pan of the current Quinn Gold. And I think you'll see that they're very, very comparable. Um, and I think you'll, you'll like both of them. Hello, Susie from California. Okay, so let's look at some colors. And because I'll be going over 200, all 260, um, So I just picked out some of the drawdowns. Um, we post these. These are posted 
I believe it's it's what color Wednesday. And so here's some of the this is quinacridone violet, which we all know is PV19. This is cobalt violet. Cobalt violet deep. Ultramarine red. It's a pretty color. Um, Rose of ultramarine, very, very, very popular color. Um, Quinn purple. Imperial purple. Imperial purple is a very, very pretty color. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to dry my brush off so I don't always use a different brush. Um, you can see some of the granulation here, right? Um, here you can see the granulation. So you can see the granulation. And now we know what granulation is caused by, so that's, that's good. This is the amethyst genuine. And you can see some of the little sparkles in the amethyst as I move it. See that little sparkle? And that's actually inherent in the mineral itself because it has crystals. It's a crystal. Okay. Um, cobalt violet. This is the ever popular moon glow, which we know is made of a three pigments. Anthraconoid red, ultramarine blue, and viridian. And that's why it has this, this red tint to it versus an orange tint, which would be shadow violet. Shadow violet would have um, the, the orange tint to it. Sister of moon glow. And here's sugilite. And again with the sugilite, if I can get that to do it, you can see the crystal of the sugilite. So this is a natural, a Primatech. This is a Primatech. Um, the quinacridones, synthetic. Ultramarine, synthetic. Rose of ultramarine, synthetic. So I don't. I will find out, Jan. Um, that was interesting to hear the word crawling. So I'm gonna look into crawling, and I will look into blooming. But I'm thinking they're probably both this, the, the, the same um, kind of thing, which is the discussion of, of this process in here, which is caused by um, surface tension, unless you force it with your brush. But in, if it does it naturally, it'd be surface tension. It's easier to figure out what is warmer versus cooler versus surface tension. Surface tension, while it sounds really quite simple, um, the chemistry and the physics of it is, is actually quite complex. Okay, so here is here's another series of guesses. So on Wednesday, a color is presented and you get to guess kind of what it is. And so um, all the guesses are painted out. So for this, we see um, Mayan Violet. This is Mayan Violet. Bordeaux. This is Permanent Violet. Quinacridone Violet. hard for me to read up, read up to that. This is Paraline Violet. Wisteria. This is Wisteria. Cobalt Violet. Cobalt Violet Deep. That's interesting. Cobalt Violet, Cobalt Violet Deep. Um, ultramarine Red. Again, Rose of Ultramarine. This is Quinacridone Purple. Imperial Purple. This right here is perperite. Perperite is a um, primatech. It's a mineral. So this is perperite. Very, I'll show you all the minerals. Um, I'll lay them all out and I'll show you all of them. Um, so Anna describes what blue blossoms are. Blossoms are caused mainly by water being dropped in after the shine has started to leave. So I think what that means is if it's happening quite quickly, it's it's because the water being absorbed into the paper, um, which would then decrease the refraction index. 
which would look like the shine has started to leave. I believe that's what it would be. Okay, and the last one, moon glow. Last one, moon glow. And I'll show you all the colors. There's 260 colors. Um, I'll show you all of them. We'll go over all of them together. So Jody says, I was using my moon glow yesterday. It's such a magical experience to use it. It is actually really interesting, isn't Jody? Because the three different um, pigments will move away from each other and cause that phenomenal granulation to occur. So here we have, again, Bordeaux, Perline Violet. I'm, I'm sorry, this is Permanent Violet. I was reading this one. This is Perline Violet. This is Permanent Violet. Quinacridone Violet. Rose of Ultramarine. Quin Purple. This is, again, Purperite. Moon Glow. Perline Mar Maroon. Perline, Mar Perline Maroon. Okay. Um, naphthamide maroon, piemontite, and raw umber violet. And then I'm going to be showing you all of the colors. Um, so if there's any question you have about a color, let me know prior to my showing it to you. And what kind of turquoise is that? What kind of turquoise is that? So Melissa, where do you see turquoise? Because I want to show it to you. I don't I don't think I have turquoise on here anyway. All right, and the last one from the What Color Wednesday. It's kind of a neat game to play. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. There we go. Um, here we have, again, my, my Violet, Permanent Violet. This is quinacridone violet, PB19, cobalt. I think that's just a duplicate. So I'm going to skip that one. Here's some of the, here's some of the um, Primatex, again, the natural minerals. Because people ask me, John, I have a tube of, of say, bronzite, and it has glitter. Well, it doesn't have glitter, it has mica because many minerals have mica or they have um, something else in them. They all have crystals, um, and that causes them to have that re refraction ability. So here, here they are and from the Primatech, all on, all on one piece of paper. So let me show you that. This right here is amethyst, and then I'll move the paper so you can kind of see it. So there you can kind of see it on all of them. You can kind of see it in in here as I move the paper. So these are all Primatex. The first one is Amethyst. And Amethyst, you can see over black. So this is black, and this is the just the color of the paper here, just to have have the um, the, the mica and or crystal pop. And this one is Sugilite. So you can see the Sugilite has more than the Amethyst, but the Amethyst has some. And this is naturally occurring. And I'll show you the minerals so you can actually see that. Here's the kyanite. So there's the kyanite. This one here is fuchsite. So you can see the fuchsite. This one is bronzite. Bronzite. And this one is red, fuch red fuchsite. So we have green and red fuchsite. So let's take a look at our color chart for just a second. I know that you may not have one in, in front of you. I'm going to look up something to go over with you. Um, Okay, 
So here we have if we look at bronzite genuine right here, bronzite genuine. we can see open circle over here, open circle. And remember what the open circle means, a lot of these have open circles. Open circle means it is transparent. So let's take a look at that. If you look here at the bronzite, you can see in this area, see how it's peeking through? So the transparent, you can see a lot more black. You can see the black. And the thing about these are putting down it's almost mass time. It goes from, again, this is a one to 10 solution, one part paint to 10 parts distilled water. So the chemist is doing that right from here to here. So it's one to 10 where they're laying the brush down and they're laying the brush down here. They're laying it this way. That's why you see, um, even though this is, you can see some of the brown here. Because they're going this way with it. And then you can see that right here. They're, go they're going this way when they laid it down. And it's 1 to 10 here. Whoops. It's 1 to 10 here. So that's what we're seeing. So, Anna, these are all, um, these are natural. Remember, organic or inorganic d depends on whether it has a metal or not. That's the difference between organic and inorganic containing or not containing a metal. And then what is natural versus synthetic is does it come from the earth or is it made in a laboratory? For example, there's many things that are found in, in nature. Siennas, for example. Siennas can be natural. They can be found in riverbeds, etc. They can also be formulated synthetically. Okay, kind of a little, so fantastic question you're asking there. And then quinacridones, you would never find in nature. They're only found in the laboratory, so therefore they're synthetic. Um, Paralines, uh, pyrroles, uh, would all be synthetics. Okay, so these would be, these are natural. Then we'd look at the chemistry to see whether it contained a metal or not, and that would allow us to distinguish between organic or inorganic. So synthetic, natural, organic, inorganic. So great question. Thank you. You know, the neat thing, Lisa, Lisa says, no one told me that I could grow up to make colors if I studied chemistry. The neat thing I love about... Um, uh, about painting, about watercolors, about oils, about acrylics, um, but certainly watercolors because you can actually see what the pigment looks like once the water has evaporated. And you can actually really see what it looks like. But really what, what art has done and what art does, it allows you to understand physics because what you see is all about light and light is all about physics. It, it allows the interaction, as, you, as you've, some of you have said, between the, the blossoms or the crawling, and that deals with chemistry, that deals with surface tension, etc. And then it deals with, with the creative part, the creative aspect, which is the, the, the desire and passion of painting. So it's where they all come together, and it's the thing I love about that, it just shows there's nothing to be frightened of. When we go over and we start discussing the C lab and where that it puts color, whether um, they're warm or cool, it, it's very simple to understand. It's nothing to be scared of. When we talk about the um, pigment, the PB19, and that it's 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 a five ring molecule, we don't have to go past that. We can just have fun at that level, talking about a color that we really love. So, fantastic. The funny thing is, if, if you had, um, I, when we go to Frankfurt each year, um, we always have uh, an artist with us. And people will always go behind him to see what he's painting because they're really so interested. And when he turns the, really quickly he'll turn his easel around, they all disperse. 
and he, he brings them back because he's such a friendly guy. He brings them back and they start to engage with him. But I will tell you, most people are probably more scared if you put a paintbrush in their hand and said paint, they would be more scared than people are of math or of, of science. Um, so what you do and what you can do as artists is, is super incredible, really, really incredible. And I will tell you, the majority of people find it really incredible what you do. Okay, so that's, that's these colors. I thought it was really interesting because it's asked so many times, why do some of my Primatex sparkle? It's because they have natural occurring mica in them or mica if you're in Europe. All right, so then we're gonna come over quickly. So Misha says, I feel guilty. I like synthetic brushes and pigments way more than others. Yeah, no guilt. I think whatever allows you to express yourself, that 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 works. Um, it's like the Chinese white versus the titanium white. What I always tell people is it's they're so close. Which one is your preference? And and that's the one that works for you. And that's true with many things. Um, George Politis uses all types of different um, colors. Um, he does a lot with granulate, granulating colors, for example. Um, Misha, who's on right now, Misha does um, uh, pictures of uh, many types of pictures, beautiful pictures, uh, paintings. Uh, but he's a realist, a realist painter, and you probably he may, but I would think that he would use very little granulating colors uh, because you want that you want the colors that do only what you want them to do. Uh, versus the the Primatex, which have that neat that neat granulation that you more play with that energy. So it's really whatever you're trying to use to express what you're feeling. Oh yes, Merry Christmas, Jody. Merry Christmas to all of you, and Happy Holidays to all of you as well, wherever you're at in the world. Okay, these are some things we talked about last time, the duochrome, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. There we go. And the duochromes, again, it's, it's, it's a single pigment that can shift to two colors. So um, here, this is the Autumn Mystery, and it's over black and over, over white of the paper. So the duochrome, you can see over the white, if we looked at, uh, when we look at interference next, you won't see it. You won't see it over white. So duochrome autumn mystery. And I'll show you these in, I'll show you these in bigger, bigger um, drawdowns and also sh we'll actually paint them for real as well. Hello, George. So George is on. George does beautiful work uh, using the granulating colors. Not only is a fabulous man, He's a, he's a fantastic artist as well. Um, duochrome cactus flower, as does Giovanni, who's on as well. And if you want to see realist art, uh, Misha does beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, duochrome hibiscus. Duochrome hibiscus. This is duochrome violet pearl. Um, here we have um, tropic sunrise. Uh, I know they're going to put on the main site how artists use some of these colors. Um, some use the pearlescent, for example, to, to make the eye come alive. Because if you looked at watercolor, you can see that um, sometimes the eye just looks like a dead eye because um, when the watercolor dries, there's, there's no shine to it. And our human eyes, just, they just, they're just always light in them. And so the pearlescent can put, can put that light back. Claudia Hernandez does a phenomenal job using um, the iridescent colors. And if you go to, she does a, a um, in the artist studio where she will go over that. Uh, but you can also go to her site and, and learn more about, she does just wonderful. Okay, and here's the iridescent. So the iridescent, as I said, it's very difficult to see it over white. Um, there's a slight tint, slight tint if you move it, you can see it over white, but where it really pops is over any dark. 
So any dark, you're going to get it to pop. And it's part of the luminescent family. And we'll go over it more. Okay, and that's interference. Interference colors. Uh, so Debbie said she just bought interference copper. It's gorgeous. has a subtle shimmer on white paper and a perfect warm glow. Um, blah, 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 blah. And of course, here it is. So Debbie just talked about this one right here, which is the iridescent copper. And you can kind of see, I can see it in the way here. It might be a little bit difficult. You can kind of see the subtle, I'm trying to look at my screen here. You can kind of see the subtle copper here on the white. Here in front of me, I can see it. The camera's having a hard time picking it up. It tries to compensate. And here it is over black. So Debbie, I'm glad you like that. Okay, iridescent. Iridescent is one of those ones, and we have quite a few iridescents and quite a few duochromes. Iridescent, you can see both over, over black and over white. So it doesn't really matter. Um, you could put it on either. It obviously will pop a little bit more over a dark color, but you can see it quite well just even over a light color or white. You can see, you can see that in here, it really it, it pops. So these are the iridescent. So the family of luminescent is iridescent, interference, pearlescent, and duochrome. Four different um, types of paint within that family. Yeah, so Christina says there's uh, four different black papers. Yes. In fact, um, I will be showing you some black paper as we go forward. And as Misha said, you can also use the, the Mars Black watercolor ground on anything. Thank you, Misha. Okay. And so here's the other ones. So this is the iridescent. Let me bring this down a little bit. So this is the iridescent russet. Iridescent Garnet. Now this is Iridescent Garnet. We also have a Primatech, which is the real Garnet. Um, beautiful. They're all over India. Many countries, India has just an amazing abundance of them, and they're just beautiful. Iridescent Jade. Um, iridescent Topaz. Iridescent Gold, which is pretty cool. Iridescent Copper. Iridescent gold stone, iridescent bronze, iridescent Aztec gold, and iridescent sunstone. And then these are just the, the, the other parts of the duochromes. Um, duochrome groom pearl. Again, that's that single pigment that shifts to two colors. Duochrome Oceanic, Duochrome Turquoise, Duochrome Aquamarine, Duochrome Emerald. So what I, what I, people ask about the iridescence, and I always say iridescence are like little lovers. If we take an iridescent and we clean our brush in water, and I take another color, whatever color it happens to be, say ultramarine blue, and I clean my brush in the same water or wet it, I could pick up some of that mica left in my water. So my recommendation is when you're using the iridescence, if you want to make sure you don't have those mica going to other parts of your painting, use and clean your brush um, in its own water. Okay. All right, I thought we'd just play with a couple colors. And I just picked out random colors. Um,
so no rhyme no reason just uh, just picked out different colors the neat thing is I happen to like all these colors I was thinking about my batch makers that actually batch the paint and um, I have batch makers that have been uh, with the company for over 30 years many over um, 20 years and if they're newcomers they're probably anywhere from five to ten years and I think the reason that batch makers stay so long is making color there's a beauty in making color because one just like you as an artist you're seeing beautiful colors all the time thank you Barbara um, but not only that it, it causes no harm you know you could feel at least when I think about it I, I think it just causes beauty in the world and I love to see what other people with their gifts can can do in using it um, just really love that so these are some of the colors we've talked about today and I thought we would just um, look at them and I will push I'll push this up so you can actually I know some of it's off the screen so I'll push it up so we can all see it okay and again it's just it's just playing with color let me actually put it this way I think maybe it's, it'll be better So here we have, this is quinacridone red, quinacridone red. So as we've, as we've talked about, quinacridone red is a synthetic. That's quinacridone red. Okay, synthetic. I will tell you, even though it's raining outside, when I'm done with these colors and done a day with, with uh, being with you, I always feel good because it's, I just get to look at really cool colors. This is Paranon, per, 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 Paranon Orange. Paranon Orange. So synthetic. And again, I just went behind me and grabbed a handful of colors out of my retains and just kind of wanted to look at those with you. Um, if you wanted to, because you can always re-listen to this uh, video, um, quinacridone red, you can look up what the characteristics are just to make sure you understand how to use the color chart. If you don't, let me know and I will help you through it. This one's uh, paranormal orange. So we know those two are synthetic. This is and Danthrone Blue. And what I'll do is I'll have these dry and then we'll look at the staining. But if you already look through your color chart, you'll know what the staining is going to be before I do it next week or on the 7th. Um, in Danthrone Blue. Okay. This is Ultramarine Turquoise. Ultramarine Turquoise. Ultramarine Turquoise. Synthetic. Synthetic, 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 synthetic. This is quinacridone gold with a little bit of uh, turquoise mixed into it. Sorry about that. Didn't clean my brush all that well. And that's what happens when you don't clean your brush. I'll do a little bit in there. 
So very popular color, quinacridone gold. Very popular color. Oh, heck yeah. So let me do, I'm always willing to do that. So I think I might have waited too long, but let's see. That's pretty, I kind of like that right there. Santorini's on my list. We see um, George in Greece. Um, so I'm going to do iridescent last because, again, I'm going to add that uh, mica into the mix, and I don't want to do that yet. So let's look over here. This one is Venetian red. Venetian red. Ah, that's a pretty color. You see that? Oh, yeah. Super pretty color. And this is an iridescent, and this is an iridescent. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one, and this one last because they're both iridescents. This one is piemontite. So piemontite is that um, natural color. So Julia says, are any DSP any DS paints fluorescent black light reactive? Um, none of them are. None of them are made that way, it doesn't mean, for example, that a crystal won't refract that. So let me get back to you on that, Julia. But certainly not by a manufacturer, we don't do that. So this is the Piemontite. And but I like the question, so let me get back to you on that one. I'm going to wet it down quite a bit here, the Piemontite, just because I want to I want to have it granulate for you. You can see you can see in here. You can really see where I didn't wet it down. You can really see the granulation happening right here. Um, unfortunately, my let me see if I can do that for you. So you can really see that granulation happening in here. Unfortunately, it's going on to my table. Um, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful granulating color. Beautiful, beautiful granulating color. Okay, back up again. Okay, and here we have, this is hematite. So this is a Primatech. Hematite violet. Hematite violet. One of the reasons you don't want to do this on paper like I'm doing here is because depending on the paper, you're going to have different absorption. It's the hematite violet. Okay, so this one over here is this one over here is iridescent moonstone. Iridescent moonstone. So we're going to add some. And remember, the iridescent is that one that's, if I lay this out, it's that one that's a little bit difficult. 
you can see it over white. It's the interference that's difficult to see over white. So the iridescent, you can see over white. Let's let's put it some places. Let's uh, let's let's put it here. We'll put some in there. You can start seeing there's a lot of that mica. When this dries, it'll have that shimmer to it. It'll be alive in here. And there we go with our little blossom. Our blossom's going in. I like that. I, I like that blossom blooming. Okay, and this last one here is blue silver. This is iridescent blue silver. Can you see that? Yeah. So I'm gonna pick some of it up and I'll add some of it maybe to here. And it'll, it has to dry a little bit before you'll start seeing it pop. Um, here, if I do this, you can actually kind of see it. it it's, it's popping in here. But when it dries, it'll really pop. And again, that's just it's just how you want to how you want to play. There we go. Yes, if you tilt the paper, it will absolutely granulate more. Um, and depending on how how rough the paper really is, um, it will. Give me all over my table here. Depending on how you how rough the paper is, of course, it'll, it'll also really granulate. So you get some really kind of cool stuff happening when you shake it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that in there. Get that up here so you can see more of it. There we go. I don't know, it makes me feel good. I love seeing color. And I love this Piemontite. You can really start seeing it granulate. It's really a really good granulator, as is the hematite. Good granulators. Okay. Yeah, I think if I did the, what I'll do is I'll bring some of the little plastic, um, my little plastic mixing cups home with me and some uh, uh, porcelain pallets, because that way it won't, because uh, these dry pretty quickly with this paper. I mean, that, that's quick. Um, but I like this this effect, and that, that's, that's surface tension going on, so it's pretty cool. And here, awesome. Well, thank you, Anne. I appreciate all of you um, using the colors. It allows me to keep the doors open. I appreciate that. Um, so thank you very much. I think with that, I'm going to end, everyone, and I'm going to see you back on the 7th of January. I wish all of you... Let me break this down. There we go. Sorry. I wish all of you a phenomenal holidays. Uh, a great New Year's and a great Christmas. Um, I wish you all safety and health and look forward to having you back. Please, by all means, ask me questions. Um, I love your questions. There's ones here I've, I'm going to mark and do uh, more with um, in coming sessions. We'll, 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 ex we'll go over that blooming um, surface tension more because it's really it, very interesting. Thank you for being with me. You make my day. I always feel fantastic when I'm done. Um, love looking at the colors, but I love reading your messages. So thank you, everyone. I wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you in the new year. Bye-bye.